foolish park goers. Enter through these gates if you dare, as the sweet smell of the churros loft through the air. The second you hear the all clear, that's when you know a theme park is near. This is For the Love of Theme Parks. <laughs> If you had to pick one toy that defined your childhood, what would it be? One toy. One. I mean, so before I, I let me, let me, I'm going to try and be as brief as I can with this. Uh, but a lot of, the funny thing about my childhood is I was the youngest of three boys, uh, which means that everything was a hand-me-down. Mm-hmm. Uh, clo- clothes and toys specifically, I was introduced to a lot of different like characters by just seeing the toy first. So I didn't know who the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. were. And then I saw, I was like, oh, these toys have a TV show when it's, you yeah. know, I mean, I guess money-wise, they probably make more money from the toys. But uh, uh, my oldest brother had, I, he wasn't even a fan, but he had some wrestling action figures. Like he had Hulk Hogan and Sting, and I think there was a Shawn Michaels one or something like that. And I was like, why, like, like who are these shirtless men? Like I yeah. was very confused yeah. by that. Uh, I thought they were just like, I don't know, karate people or something. Cause yeah. they did like punching actions. Um, street sharks, which something I figured out recently what those were, which is these like big, like bodybuilding sharks that had human bodies, but shark yeah. skin and shark heads. It was very weird. Yeah. Um, and, but like, Aside from all that, there was, like, one, I guess, that would be not, like, a hand-me-down that defined me, which would be moon shoes. Have you guys you ever... had moon shoes? Yes. Uh, oh, I, I wanted fell, them real bad. I, I fell for the, like, you know, marketing scheme. Of like, moon shoes, moon, whatever. I don't even know yeah, what the song was. I, but, I wanted them. I know. <laughs> uh, but I did convince uh, my mom to get them for me for my, like, f- fifth fourth or fifth birthday or yeah. something like that so i guess moon shoes and i bring up moon shoes all the time i don't know if it was you i thought of, i think i brought it up to jim or somebody else but uh in in line for space mountain the like paneling on the walls is very moon shoes i don't know if yeah. ever like in the like loading area yeah. it's very moon shoes yeah i think i think you might have said that to me okay but yeah. or you said it to both of us that's that's <laughs> yeah, i bring possible. up moon shoes a lot whenever i can so <laughs> but for you what would you what would you i guess one or a few uh so pokemon cards i don't know if that counts as a toy okay but that was definitely one of the things that i played with the most yeah uh, my game boy of uh-huh. course more pokemon on there um also uh tamagotchis i had a lot of tamagotchis those Those are the little egg things or the little creature you had to take care of um i also had this like toy like uh like toy vet like clinic oh okay that i would play with a lot yeah i had had like a kitchen set or something well no it wasn't like it wasn't like a big one like you know those oh you you had like a like a thing that had the it was it was like a it was like a barbie dream house except it was like a vet clinic okay and i played with that a ton and then like randomly when i was in like fourth or fifth grade like it was in my closet and then it just started randomly making really creepy noises because it made noises. And, oh, okay. okay. And, but yeah, <laughs> should have prefaced that. It first. did. No, it did make noises. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was that was really creepy. Um, so then we had to get rid of that. Um, I also had a bunch of littlest pet shops. Oh, those that's little, cool. those little yeah, tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. things. I yeah. had a lot of those. I had a lot. But for like one, what would you pick for one? I guess. I don't know. Uh, Pokemon cards. Okay. Those those were a lot of my time. Okay, okay. I also just I played outside a lot as a child. Okay, well, so <laughs> I, I, I did my too, play set maybe. I guess my <laughs> some bike leaves <laughs> or my scooter as a kid. That was probably. Like, I learned moon, how. That's to, why I said moon shoes. <laughs> I learned how to pogo stick when I was in middle school, and I think that's probably one of my biggest accomplishments. That's. I guess that that works. <laughs> I should have. I had to for a job thing. I had to answer what my the thing I was most proud of is, and I should have said learning to pogo stick. <laughs> um, but where'd you? Uh, so I guess leading into this, these Pokemon cards, you got them somewhere, correct? Yes, it's not what you're trying to lead into. Oh, it's not what I'm trying to lead no, into. No, but I can. Okay, <laughs> so the the what you're trying to lead into another toy that defined my childhood okay, was a okay. skip it. A skip it, and where did you get that? 
I got my skip it at the Toys R Us in Times Square. Wow, that is crazy. Within its opening year, most likely. Wow, that's even more crazy. I didn't yeah. even go there till like right before it closed off. <laughs> I just so. I, I texted my mom and I was like, "Do you know around what year we went?" And she said it was either 2001 or 2002, and it opened November 2001. It's so. probably 2002. Yeah. but yeah, no, that's that's crazy. Uh, I, I, as forceful as that segue was, <laughs> I'm sure you already know what the topic is. Uh, Toys R Us. Uh, we're mainly talking about the Toys R Us in Times Square, the yeah. flagship show that they've it, got. Not show. Store. For, flagship store. <laughs> He's sorry, talking about bad. wrestling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> flagship store that they ha had. Sorry, my yeah. bad. I'm going to uh, cry. <laughs> I know. Uh, anyways, uh, but that is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. It's not really theme parky, and I know we're for the love of theme parks, but it's themed entertainment. We do talk about other different types of dining experiences, yeah. other types of shows, stuff like that, that has to do with a regular piece of entertainment or experience that is just themed and then brings it out of this world. So um, if you don't know who we are, we are for the love of theme parks. Uh, my name is Ryan. Her name is... Isabel. Isabel. I do that every time. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we run a YouTube channel, other social media, stuff like that. Uh, I don't. Well, she helps a little bit, but uh, she is my co-host on the podcast here. She does most of the research for this, and uh, our main topic today is Toys R Us. Uh, quickly, uh, make sure you give us a follow, uh, subscribe on podcast networks, and give us a rate review if you can. Uh, that would be greatly appreciated. First, we're going to give a brief history of the company itself, uh, the Toys R Us company. We are talking about the main store uh, that, they've, that they had, uh, but there, it's a very important to the history mm -hmm. of the rise and fall of the store uh, to talk about the company, obviously. So, yeah, and how, how it got its, like its, its start. Yeah. Because it's kind of weird. Like I, we can technically do a full episode on all these stores. But it's just it's just depressing. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So we're gonna kind of breeze through this. Um, it was founded in April of 1948, which sounds very very early yeah. for like I know department stores were making a rise in the 50s, 60s, 70s, but that seems like very on the front end of it. I'm sure there was one location that opened up as a family runs thing. Well, it, so of... yeah, it was a it was a children's furniture store. Wow, really? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's... So it w in it started in 1948 as a children's furniture store. Okay. And then he started adding toys. Okay. The founder yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of an add-on, like, hey, yeah. also buy yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you know parents are taking their kids furniture shopping, and those kids are miserable. So yeah, he's, yeah. like, <laughs> adding toys to get more revenue. Yeah, no. no I mean, that would, that would make purpose, perfect sense, and it, like, led to, uh, I think, 800 stores in the U.S. and yeah. 800 worldwide, which... If I believe, if I'm correctly, I don't know if this is further in the notes, but there is still Toys R Us's that are open worldwide. Worldwide, correct? I think so. I think there's one in like Dubai and one in, the in, US, in Bali or something like that. I don't like think that. so. Okay, okay. I think well, all the US. US, I don't, I, I don't think there's any. They all closed blockbusters this year. type situation with it. There. There's like one in Washington. Well, there was there was two left in, and they closed in February of this year. Oh, okay. That's a. Uh, a little sad, but it's uh, kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but at its peak, it was considered a category killer. Which what would what would that be defined as? I guess just like something that like no other store could really like make match. a mark. Of yeah. course, of course, like a GameStop yeah. kind of thing. Like not not now GameStop, but you know, <laughs> which is what they, well, yeah, you know. I I mean that's that's kind of the thing, and like what what I want to go into next is that like with the rise of like online retailers like Amazon and like mass merchants. So, you know, places you could, your one-stop shop. Yeah. Um, it's, you don't really have category killers anymore. Yeah. I mean, you have company killers. Yeah. One company that kind of kills Amazon. For you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just interesting though, but, um, you know, and they, they've been on a, they had been on a steady decline for a while. Yeah. And then f I didn't realize this. Yeah. No one, I mean, people walking into Toys R Us is probably realized this, yeah. but, you know, I was oblivious. Anyways, um, they ended up filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on September 18th, 2017. That was okay. like four December? years ago? September 18th, September. 2017. Okay. That was like so long ago, and it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. I don't feel like it was that, because I had been in a Toys R Us 
the Christmas season before all of them like started closing and stuff. Um, to I know shop. we went to one. Yeah. So I don't think it was. Well, no, that was just when they were like, hey, okay, we're bankrupt. Like, no, that wasn't. That okay, was just it when they like declared bank. Okay. I wanted to include the gif of Michael Scott. Just... I declare bankruptcy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then in March 2018, the announcement came that they would be closing all of their U.S. and all of their British stores. Okay. Okay. So um, the British locations closed in April and the U.S. locations closed in June, although I think some of them stayed open. Um, but the other locations in, like, international markets were fine. Like, I mean, they obviously took a little bit of a hit, but, again, there are still um, I mean, places. Amazon isn't is. Yes. You know. um, so Toys R Us, I, I think some of them may have been. So, so the company does still operate as a licensor of the chain's international op- uh, operations. Yeah. Um, and they did announce in october of 2019 that they planned to relaunch the u.s toys r us stores yes. in the future no, I, I yeah i remember seeing do that. not think that's gonna happen they had like a, a pop-up thing that they they did somewhere that was like oh you know come yeah here. and they had like a lot of like hands-on type because it's like something you can't do with Joffrey. amazon yeah yeah they had uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the giraffe, giraffe the giraffe um, and, you know and then in, on january 20th 2019 the company emerged from bankruptcy as true kids I, I, I don't know if that was, like, who bought this is them. This T-R-U kids. Yes. Like, true TV, <laughs> yeah. but the kids um, So there was only two locations left in the U.S., and they closed in February 2021 due, due to financial losses from COVID. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would expect that. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is a lot of different companies, uh, which is understandable, um, but uh, to kind of give a... a, a to not highlight their failures, but their successes. Um, in- I, I don't know. This might be the, this, I think this is the beginning of the end, what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, this is when it was at its peak in my mind okay, and in, yeah. in advertisers' minds and all that yeah. type of stuff. But um, basically in 1998, they were at their peak, but were then... In sur- 1997, they were at their peak. Okay, seven, 98, they were at their peak. they were surpassed. They were surpassed by Walmart for toy re- retailers, which... Um, this is in the States. I know in Canada and elsewhere yeah. it may have not, you know, been this way. Can exactly. you believe Canada doesn't have targets? Um, yeah, Canada doesn't have a lot of stuff. It's just weird to me. <laughs> but we also don't have a lot of stuff Canada does, but. <laughs> yeah, we don't have Putin. <laughs> uh, for, uh, once they were surpassed, they looked for inspiration from FAO Schwartz, which I don't know if you're familiar with this. I know in the notes it mentions the movie Big with... I've never seen Big. <laughs> okay. Well, I have seen Big. I don't, if, but I, don't I have if, seen Home Alone too. Okay. So F.A.O. Schwartz is featured. It's it's like a very, very old toy store that's in New yeah. York that's very famous. All the Was. kids... It's, it, Correct. Yes. I, I'm only saying this because I have been there yeah. and I, last time I was in New York, it still existed. Same with the Toys R Us. Yeah. So, and on that New York trip, we did FAO Schwartz, which has an Apple store that's kind of, or had an Apple store that's pretty close like to in it. it. Oh, in no. It. no, no, no. The <laughs> Apple store is really cool. Like it's like this big glass cube with like a oh. Apple thing in the middle. And then you go in and you like go down these spiral stairs and then you're like in the underground type Apple. It's crazy. You should, you should look it up. Um, that's weird. I've never heard of that. Uh, but uh, we also went to the FAO Schwartz that was right there. Um, the big piano thing was there in the the room where yeah. Tom Hanks and whatever, you know, that was cool. I didn't dance on it. What or is anything. big about? Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> never mind, never no, mind. No no. no, 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 it's fine. It's it's a it's a cool I'll, I'll keep it short. It's a cool it's a cool concept. Basically, uh, you know the when you go to like uh like a boardwalk pier place and there's that the um like the gypsy person inside the box with the glass thing, you're like, oh, fortune teller type thing. Yeah. They give you a card or whatever. Basically, he wishes that he was older because he's sick of being a kid. I want to be an adult. So this Oh, kid, it's a child. It's a it's child. It's not Tom Hanks. And then he turns into, he wakes up turns the next morning, into and he's Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks and okay. he's an adult. Uh, and that's his story. And so it's not Tom Hanks he wishing he was the end, I think. like an adult. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, that's that's Forrest okay. Gump. Uh, so Toys R Us was uh, recruited, 
Toys R Us recruited FAO Schwartz chairman um, John Tyler to it's be the, John Eiler. That was autocorrected. Okay, John Eiler. Sorry. To be part of the next <laughs> chairman uh, um, and CEO of Toys R Us, which makes a lot of sense. And because that was the vision they were going for. Yeah, they were going for like, hey, what, like, how could we be the classic? Like, yeah. like what when people think toys, they, they because think of us. Like, people were like not happy. They just thought of Toys R Us as like a dirty warehouse and apparently like really the, yeah apparently the workers like sucked and they were like mean because <laughs> well, they weren't getting paid enough <laughs> in in 1998 i was uh three four i was one okay i was three uh so yeah. this is this is something this is that, from my research <laughs> yeah but i'm just saying like the the whatever dirty warehouse all like that that is not something that i yeah you know associate with it and you know yeah Maybe a lot of people who are listening to this would also yeah, that's be true. That's but true. like you know, just to kind of reiterate that that's where they were and where they wanted to be, um, and um, yeah, basically they brought in designers to reconstruct a lot of their stores. They brought in uh, not like reconstruct, but I'm sure like redesign, redesign and layouts and making yeah. sure like if you've been in like. I can tell you that the Mundelein, Illinois Toys R Us, the last one that I had been in, you had to like go through this one end and then you were like stuck in the store. Like you were yeah. like weaving back. It's not like a Walmart where you go in there and it's a grid yeah. and you find the aisle, whatever. This is like they want people to go in there with their kids, you know. Um, but yeah, like that. basically they redesigned, uh, made everything all more co- colorful, not dusty, I they guess. They wanted visual appeal over anything else. Yeah, definitely. They and wanted I, it to look nice. And that's kind of when they brought up their mascot a lot more to the forefront. I yeah. believe he might have existed before then. Um, as well as that, they increased wages. Always a good thing. Um, and they also uh, decided to open a flagship store. Yes. Which is our main topic. I know we already said over oh, our main topic today, yeah. but this is like the actual thing because this is like this is the most themey type theme park thing, and there's a ride in there too. <laughs> I yeah, I I was asked for my class the other day, like for an attendance question, what what was my favorite childhood memory, and I was like, oh, I think it might have been the Toys R Us in Times Square, and then I looked it up. And it was closed. And I don't know why this shocked me because <laughs> I, I I realized like two days later that, you know, all Toys R Uses are closed. Yeah. Why would they keep up I the one that was not, not making a profit ever? I truly do not know. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. But I got very upset and I brought it up to Ryan and he's like, I've been there too. Let's yeah. do it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So this is kind of a last minute <laughs> thing. This is probably the most, the latest this we've is recorded me a mourning. podcast. This is me mourning the Toys R Us in Times Square. <laughs> Whereas a few other things we did recently, we were like, oh, we could do a podcast on this. We could do like, we finally yeah. rode the Jimmy Fallon ride. We did a few other things at Universal, whatever. And like, oh, we can do that. You know, we're like, no, let's do Times, the Times Square I'm gonna uh, cry Toys before this is over. <laughs> okay. I don't know why it's that near and dear to your heart. I guess I was like I'm probably 16 when I went, 17 when I went. So. I was um, four or five. Okay. So I was prime Do you Toys R Us age. You're, you, it's highlighted for you to take over the reins I, I'll on this take next over part. It. Are I, you sure yeah, you're going to be okay. able to do this? I'm okay. 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 <laughs> um, so the flagship store, uh, the property sat on the corner of Broadway and 44th Street. Know nothing about New York City. Okay. So this is like <laughs> center and center of Times Square. So Times Square, you know, yeah. it's uh, a few blocks off from... Uh, the big park that's there that I, what is the park that's named there? I don't know. Well, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> oh my God. Why, why can't it? Where uh, is Central it? Park. Yeah. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> I had to think of the, uh, the coffee shop from friends in order to figure out what that was. But it's a few blocks off from there, and it's basically just an intersection that intersects a bunch of different streets. Yeah. And right now, I believe it might be pedestrian only still. Uh, I know at one point they changed it to that, I believe. Um, and there's, you know, an M&M store there. There's a... Um, did you see the M M&M and M store at Disney Springs is closed? Yeah, today. But I, I don't know if it's permanent or there was an outbreak within their. They said they were doing construction in the store. Yeah, I want to know what happened. It literally just opened <laughs> yeah. like a few months ago, so I don't know what's going. I'm on I'm worried, with that. like maybe they have like M and M's in the ducts, and it like opened and like hit somebody. 
on the, in, in like, like the, the ceiling. ceiling. You think it's raining M&Ms and that's yeah. why they're, okay. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Times Square has a, a bunch of different really cool stuff. I know they got like a Bubba Gumps down there. You got like, oh, like it's themed entertainment central. Yeah. I know I mentioned it previously. They have a, they had a space uh, 2112 yeah. there. They like a lot of like really cheesy, weird stuff. Um, uh, and yeah, th- this was like the main store that was there that like every I mean, every person under the age of probably 15, 14 was like, oh, yeah. I'd like to go there because there's a yeah. there's a Ferris wheel inside of this Toys R yes. Us that is right off of the busiest intersection in the world. Um, one of the um, busiest intersections in the world. So. so their design would be the largest toy store in the world, uh-huh. understandably. Of course. And also the largest retailer in Times Square. Yeah. Also understandable. Yeah. <laughs> It cost $35 million to build. Yeah, I mean, on top, like if this was... That's not that's not including rent, though. That's the thing. I know, thing. that's the thing. <laughs> they, like, it's, it's different when you're talking about like Disney building an attraction yeah. and it costs They don't have to pay million. for the land. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, yeah, oh, we own this and yeah. we're just going to build it and then it'll be that and utilities and, you know, cast members and, and that's it. Yeah, and you don't have to deal with rising rent prices. Of course, which. Yeah. Played a role in this, but yeah, thirty-five million sounds like for a lot. A toy store. <laughs> it's for it's for a retail store. That's that's a yeah. lot for a retail store. I yeah. know. Uh, that's yeah. In theme park terms, it's not that much, but I, my 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 like bar that I always set is, um, I think it was. See, I already forgot it now. Um, Mission Space. Yeah. The space simulator ride yeah. at Epcot costs. I think a hundred million or yeah. one hundred fifty. I think it was a hundred million, and that's a lot of money. But then I compare it. That's like the for me the the peak yeah. of theme parks where it's like okay, that's how much that costs, and that's yeah. you know you know exactly what you're getting with that. Yeah. So how you can you compare it to other things? And this was obviously a lot less than that, but yeah. it's also like this is a theme park that people are going to ride that ride for at least a few years after it opened, mm-hmm. uh, and they're paying a hundred dollars to get in to do this now. People are paying zero dollars yeah. to walk into this, you know, um, Toys R Us and pay maybe three dollars to ride the yeah. the Ferris wheel inside, and they nobody's guaranteed to be buying anything. And I'm sure it didn't turn out a lot yeah. of you know, like toys because a lot of people are on vacation there. But a lot of people, well, okay, I know. have something I want to talk about. Okay, because okay. of that, I think <laughs> actually you might be talking about it. But anyways, um, so on. Um, Wait, let me back up for a second. Okay, okay. So the space was 101,000 square feet. Okay. Which is, a, well, th- that's a lot of space. Especially for Times Square. That's huge. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so the opening day was set for November 17th, 2001. Okay. And um, on November fir- 14th, November 14th, uh, they held their first major event. And this was something that they had wanted to do. They wanted this to be like... A, a place for like events and for like product releases. So when you say events, like I've seen events happen before at malls where it's like, um, there's like, like some press thing going on. Like, it's not like, like they were, they wanted like toy drops basically. Toy, like okay, toy okay, releases. Okay. Like they, they did, um, the release for Harry Potter and the order of the Phoenix in 2003 the, at the, the store. Movie? No, the book. The book. Okay. 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 In 2003. Yeah. And, uh, some like audiobook guy was didn't they, there. Didn't they also do like CD releases too for yes. like Disney Channel stars and stuff? Miranda like, Cosgrove. Uh, there <laughs> Sparks you. Fly. I think that's what the album Did, was called. Didn't like Lizzie McGuire or not? No, I mean uh, Hillary Probably. Duff do a release there too or something Probably. like that. Okay, okay. Um, but so their first their first major event was the release of the original Xbox. In 2001? Yes. I thought it was released before that. No, it was 2001. And I think it might have been like a like early access type thing because everything I saw online said that it was released November 15th, but the event was the 14th. And Bill Gates actually handed out the first Xbox <laughs> to the person. And it's like the funniest picture ever. Um, but yeah, to celebrate their opening day, they had a parade of like 50 characters the children's characters you know you got spongebob you got bert you got arnie you got barbie you got shrek you got elmo that is a intellectual property okay so what i want to know is were these the characters so they so so just to preface they had a parade at the Times square toys r us and they had spongebob bert ernie barbie 
Shrek and Elmo were these people that they just hired from Times Square. That so was something that this. I that I like heard. <laughs> I was like, when I was doing my research, people were like, yeah. How do you tell this Elmo from the other Elmos that are wandering around Times Square? And, and the joke is the other Elmo wandering around Times Square has their like head, their like mask yeah. up, and they're like asking for yeah. money because that's that's what they do. Yeah. Like you know, uh, yeah, that's that's something that always like I I don't think we're ever going to talk about this. I was thinking about this like two days ago. How weird it is that like there's such a culture and like strict rules around like characters in yeah. Disney parks and other theme parks and stuff like that. And then like you go to times square and you'll see it's this a free for all. It's a, and it's just like, you know, Minnie and Mickey are walking down the street w- without heads. Yeah. On and like, like it's like, <laughs> do I'm, not take your child to times square. Yeah. If you don't want to, <laughs> you, know, you don't want to ruin that magic. Maybe take them to Disney first. And then when they're old enough to reveal <laughs> that these aren't actually giant mice, uh, take them to times square and they'll, They'll definitely be, uh, the whole world will be opened up to them. So um, so the outside of the store had, like, a giant, like, video billboard, essentially. Yeah, that which was, is all over Times Square. They yeah. have these video billboards. But it everywhere. was 165 separate panels. Okay. That would, it cycled through various advertisements and also interior, interior views of the store. Which oh, I thought was interesting. So like you're like looking inside. Yeah. Of it kind of. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a, that's a cool thing to do. Um, but yeah, I, it's. I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm hesitant to get into the store because that's where we're going next. Yes. Uh, but I guess, I guess we'll just kind of, yeah. <laughs> so the main floor, we go in and you're actually not on, like you walk into the store and you're walking into the second floor. Yes. Correct. So you're walking into the second floor. Um, or you're walking into floor one and the main floor is floor negative one. Okay. Actually, it would be floor zero. Sorry. Okay, so I guess you'll be talking about the main floor. I'll be talking about the negative one floor. So <laughs> negative one floor um, ha- gives you access to the Ferris wheel, which is a 60-foot tall Ferris wheel, and all the cars are themed to different okay. characters. This is something I wanted to say about this that I found out from a video that I was watching. So when the store closed down, do you know what they did with all the Ferris wheel cars? Yes, I Dang know. it. Sorry. Okay, so, I've seen them there. That's why I know. <laughs> so they donated all of the Ferris wheel cars. Because the Ferris wheel cars were really cool. They were all themed. To different, like, like there SpongeBob, was, Bert, Bert, Ernie, Barbie, it was, Shrek, it was, Elmo. Uh, like. There was, like, SpongeBob. There was, like, a, a Playmobil one. There yeah. was a Pokemon one. Um there was one with E.T. in it. Yeah. Um, but they donated all of them to Give Kids the World Village. In, in Orlando. In Orlando. Yeah. Or I guess it's, I think it's technically in Kissimmee. Yeah. Um, and they, like, use them as parade floats, which yeah. I think is really fun. Except for some weird licensing reason, they had to cover up E.T. And he's covered up with the that's, gift bag. That's Steven Spielberg's <laughs> fault. <laughs> As if you've ever been to Give Kids a World, which we're definitely going to do like multiple Christmas episodes on that, just because that's something that we. It's a it's a cause you know, that we is close to our it's hearts. Basically, they they provide uh, um, vacations for um, well, housing for vacations for a lot of um, uh, families of critically ill children. Correct, and they work with uh, closely with um, Make a Make Wish. Wish, and they work closely with Disney as well. Yes. Um, they have a lot of Imagineers and creative minds from Universal and Disney um, help them design their buildings. And it's it's like a whole like facility that they, not a facility, but it's like a mini town that they yes. have built. We we went there in December uh, for their Christmas event that they have going on. Um, definitely 100% recommend if they do it again. I don't know if they're going to. I think they do it every year. Okay. I, think. I just know I'm that they sure. were not having people there. So yes. that's why they were able to do it yeah. last uh, yeah, year. Yeah, I'm not so, sure. At, to the scale that they were. So... Um, but yeah, uh, give kids a world really cool. We'll talk about that sometime later. Yes. Uh, but, uh, this Ferris wheel was really cool. I rode the Ferris wheel when I was there. So um, I talked to my mom, I called my mom and I was like, okay, so when were we there? And also what was my favorite thing? Yeah. Because again, I was young. I, I do remember being there. I a hundred percent remember being there, but, um, I think we were there twice, honestly, because I don't think I got my skip at the first time we were there. Um, which was near and dear to my heart. So you were there 
casually? Uh, can, can you, where did you live at this time? Oh, <laughs> so, okay. So we lived in New Jersey. We lived in Washington, New Jersey, which is about an hour 15 from um, New, New York, York City. Okay. And then we lived in Allentown, Pennsylvania, which is like an hour 45. Okay. From New York City. So, so we lived really on close. The other side, so we would do like day trips <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Um, New York City. And so I think we went twice. My, my mom says the first time we went was 2001, 2002, yeah. which makes sense because I do remember that trip. You weren't there for the Bill Gates Xbox no, release. I was not there. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, I asked my mom, I was like, okay, I know what I did not like in the store. I specifically know what I hated in this store. Yeah. But what did I like? She said I was just obsessed with the Ferris wheel. I was like, I don't think I wrote it, though. And she's like, no. No, I don't think you did. I think you just like to look at it. Yeah. See, I, the, for the Ferris wheel, I don't remember which car we were in either. Yeah. Like, I just know that we, we that was something it. we did. And yeah. I, we might have been in, like, a, I don't I, it was red. I don't know which car it would have been. Yeah. I remember it being red. And I was, like, I was in high school still. But we were there for a, uh, a family wedding, and we were doing all the touristy things we uh, Rockefeller, whatever, 30 Rock, which is something that's really cool. Um, did a, obviously, Times Square multiple times. We did a tour, stuff like that. So, um, uh, so other than that, on the negative one floor, they had a lot of video game displays, yeah. stuff like that, which, at the you know, this was probably the thing that was updated most there because new consoles come out yeah. and all this stuff. And, of course, they all the different displays and stuff might have been updated, but this is the one that probably went more frequently yeah. through with different games and stuff. Uh, they had the Hot Wheels area down there, um, which is another big childhood <laughs> thing for me. Uh, they had an ice cream shop and a UPS store. That is what I wanted to mention because they have the UPS store so that people can buy their toys and ship them home or ship them to friends and family straight from the store. Yeah. Genius. Uh, I mean, Genius. or you could just order it online and have that it That wasn't a there. thing. <laughs> I mean, when how, they opened. Uh, how we order gifts now for Christmas for our nieces and nephews. <laughs> okay, well, this past Christmas, we didn't do it. And then I ended up spending, like, way too much money on shipping this Christmas. Yeah. On We had to send out a bunch of packages because, you know, this is our first Christmas not being within, like, three hours, four hours of our family. Yeah. So we had to send out a bunch of packages. I spent easily, like, $100 on shipping this That's Christmas. So, Amazon, I hate you, but you're getting my money. <laughs> <laughs> um, um do we want to move up from the, are we are we kind of I, yeah i don't really know what was on the main floor i think it was just more displays i mean the main thing is so the 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 there's a big wheel in the middle of this yes and that big wheel takes up a lot of yes. area and i know there was probably checkouts and stuff on this yeah. main en entrance area and a lot of displays and uh but the the ferris wheel does take up a lot of room um but it, they, they did have a more open space, if I do recall, in this yeah. main area, too. So that was uh, the f negative one floor and kind of kind of the main the, the yeah. entrance floor as well. Uh, so moving up to the third or second, technically. Okay, you know what? I'm sorry. I messed up the numbering of all these floors. We're going back to normal. <laughs> okay, we're good. Okay. Um, so the third floor was actually where most of the retail space was. Yeah. This is probably the floor where... We spent, both of us spent the most time. Probably, yeah. Um, so they had a very elaborate Lego section. Yeah. Um, they had a Candyland candy store. They had a two-story, 4,000-square-foot walkthrough of the Barbie Dream House. I remember that for sure. I do not. I don't think I went in there I remember all. that. <laughs> they also had a 20-foot-tall T-Rex animatronic that moved and roared. Yeah. I hated so this. So that's the thing that you were... I hated it. I was terrified of it like genuinely like i told my mom i did not want to go back in there if we were going back by the dinosaur it scared me so, so bad. it was just like a vicinity thing you didn't think the dinosaur was going to move around in the store no i did or... okay i did i just didn't want to see it or hear it yeah um uh, but yeah it weighed five tons so isn't you, you that think insane they'd want to put that on the negative one floor. <laughs> <laughs> um but when they were building like the store an entire like side of the building had to be left off until they could move the dinosaur in there, and then they put the wall on. So you think it's still in there today? No. You want to know what they did with it? Because the people who demolished it, they asked what they did with the um, T-Rex, and they said they tore it up and burned it. Yeah. I mean, well, tore it up is kind of weird because it's... It's metal. It's just, 
I mean, well, I mean, it had a skin. I on know, it. but like, what did you do with all from the the metal? Skin, I don't know. I don't know. That sounds weird. I and think they just got like a T Rex Terminator hiding somewhere in that old navy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I think it's uh, it's it's kind of weird. Was it was it attached to a like Jurassic Park property? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That makes that makes perfect sense. And I, but like again, also like, I guess at the time, two thousand one was still two thousand two, still pretty popular. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Um, I hadn't seen it at that point. Obviously, I don't think. <laughs> that's kind of weird placement kind of on the same floor next to the Barbie dream house. Well, it's they basically had like different lands. Like that's essentially what it was. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was laid out like a theme park. Yes. As much as this is not a theme park topic, this is a theme park yeah. topic because of the, like, I mean, they have different departments in Home Depot, but it's, it's kind of similar yeah. to like, you know, they're just heavily themed. As yeah. If the uh, electric department at home depot is themed to like marvel and plumbing i was is thinking about what if what if it was um oh dang it Sci- uh that scooby-doo movie cyber chase uh-huh that's what the electric department is themed like. yeah scooby-doo <laughs> cyber chase okay okay that's it's <laughs> a good movie um but yeah uh, other than that third floor also had anything else Oh uh, no, the those candy are the main Land ones. store. It's yeah. just a candy store. Like they yeah. have ice cream too, probably. Yeah, they they also at some point added a like a Wonka candy store. I don't that I don't makes... know if it replaced the Candy Land store, but they did have a candy a Wonka candy store. Okay. Probably yeah. while you were there. Probably. Yeah. I, I, I do recall there being at least some type of like Wonka as in like the mythic the the fake Willy Wonka. The fake company that yeah. makes these Willy Wonka, not the movie, not like not uh, no. whatever uh, Gene Wilder or no, Johnny Depp. No, no, no. Like, as, as if Wonka was a real company. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, they also had Oompa Loompas there. Cool. Like employees or yeah. like oh, that's cool. But like for how long? It I don't know, but the picture I saw. It just looked like somebody got like a really bad spray tan. That's yeah. all it looked like. <laughs> I mean, if you've seen the original, movie, I know, that's I kinda... know. <laughs> um, but we're moving on to the fourth floor now. Uh, they had their main feature. Of the fourth floor was a Pepsi World soda fountain, which sounds oddly similar to something we just <laughs> talked about. That is returning to Epcot, which is Club Cool, where they have Pepsi's from all over the world. Is that what that was? Correct. I don't know. Okay. Um, that's at least what we are told, what it was, the <laughs> Pepsi World Soda Fountain. I, either I that think it or was it, just a really elaborate Pepsi display thing. That, yeah, <laughs> that, could, that could very well be that as well. I don't, I don't recall even being on this floor when we went there. So the fourth floor, there's like not a ton of space at all because the third floor is like really tall. Yeah. So the fourth... Well, I mean, the, the two-floor Barbie Dreamhouse kind of yes. explains that. That probably yes. took up a large portion so of the So the fourth, fourth floor, floor, there's, like, not a lot up there at all. Yeah. And uh, they also had a boardroom for meetings that was off-limits to guests. and But, but had a great view of Times Square. When they were trying to recover financially, they started hosting birthday parties at this Toys R Us. And I think they were hosting in the boardroom, and they had, like, themed birthday parties. You could have, like... Like a pirate-themed birthday party. It sounded like a lot of this fun. I'm not going to lie. This just unlocked a memory from my mind. Uh, the uh, the Regal uh, uh, movie theater in Lake Zurich, yeah. Illinois. We had uh, a birthday party there. We had a birthday party there, and they had like a weird like back room that we yeah, had. Yeah, like, they always do. I know, but it's it's it was weird to me because like oh, we're having a birthday party at the movie theater, and then we like go see a movie or we go to this back room that's like got a table and folding yeah. chairs and like maybe a few balloons and a banner yeah. and it's like it's not like other birthday parties where you're Chuck E. Cheese and there's games but it's just like we're closed off in this corner of the movie theater it's always with like no that <laughs> it's like that too when you go when you have a birthday party at a laser tag place yeah yeah but at least the laser tag place that was by us had like theming to the rooms or at least a, like paint that yeah. looked fun not yeah. like just plain white walls they didn't just throw you in the employee break room and exactly <laughs> and that's what it felt like so uh but this is I, I, I guess uh, birthday parties in Times Square. This is that's probably it's really probably fun. Like Honestly, based off of where that is, that's a really really good view. Yeah, and um, like I mean, it was definitely like very expensive, but like that that sounds really cool. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, for sure. And I mean, because of how great the view was, rent for this space was twelve million dollars a year. 
For this birthday party room? No, 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 no. For the building. <laughs> for the building. It was $12 million. And that's in addition to the $35 million that they had to spend to build the store. Yeah, so could we do the math then? So $35 million plus 12 times. Well, it, it increased as well. The oh, rent, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. So, the, yeah, I mean, that's they lost so, so much money. Yes. which we talk know, about. I think we talk about it. I think so. I think it's... Nope. No, we don't Oh, no, I do. I do. Off. Sorry. I, I, it's literally two bullet points down. Okay, My keep bad. going. Then. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I, I I was just kind of looking up at like about... Besides the opening, there wasn't like a ton of stuff that happened. There was this thing called the Br- Granny Peace Brigade. Brigade. Um, there was a bunch of these old ladies that would like line, like show up and protest like violent video games and like... Yeah. Like war toys and stuff. And... <laughs> One year, they um, they like hijacked the Ferris wheel <laughs> and they like hung their banners from the Ferris wheel, and they but they didn't think out like an escape plan. So the, as soon as they got off, they were like, "Yeah, you gotta leave." Um, it's just it's, were they like you know they weren't arrested. No, they were just like, <laughs> like you gotta leave. But they showed up like every year, so that was like a thing you would see a lot. Was there um, a date that they picked for this? Was it was is around Christmas time. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Perfect timing, of course. Yeah. Um, this other thing that was weird, um, in August 2003, a very large group of people gathered in front of the T-Rex, the giant T-Rex, to kneel down and scream. 2003? Yes. That seems a little early for, like, internet memes. Uh, flash mobs are very popular around this time. Oh, were they? Yes. I, I, the but, timelines are a little weird for me. But yeah, no, if I had not seen this video, I would not have believed it. It's so bizarre. They're just kneeling down like, ah, it's very scary. So this scary. is just a flash mob, but just not a yeah. synchronized dance. Not dancing, just, just kneeling down and yell. just screaming. Yeah. Um, but yeah, by 2005, so that's four years after opening, okay. the store had still not turned a profit. Um, so at this point, if let's say it was a fixed rent from 2001 to 2005. That's too much math. Okay, so that's four years. Twelve times four plus thirty-five. That's what we're that's what we're looking at. That's how much money that they not in debt because they like made some of that money up. But they did have they were in debt. Like they were in debt for like a lot of it because um there was just like they were just in I can't find my calculator, so I'm not gonna be able to get your actual number there. Okay, that's fine. I'm I'll, sorry, I'll look yeah, it up you while it. you keep doing bullet points on here. Um but it was basically like they went in in debt for this not in debt but um they by 2005 i think they had been expecting so their first year they 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 received about like 83 million jeez <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> which well i mean they're not in debt 83 million they're still making no, money but no. again it's a toy store it's a big and, toy store in a good spot, but again, like me having worked in department stores before, even a big hardware store for a weekend, they're maybe looking at like a million dollars for like money spent at that store yeah. for that weekend. But that does not mean profit. That does not mean profit because it's yeah. still, you still got to pay for all the toys that are there. You got to pay for you know obviously rent all that other stuff. So it, it they have not yet to make eighty three million at that point. Um, which is, it, I mean, it makes sense. A lot of businesses don't make money. Well, also part of the problem. So they, their first year, they had expected like 20 million people to visit. Yeah. They got 10 million. In their first year? Yeah. Okay. I mean, th- there's a big reason for that. Yes. Uh, it's not, it's not, there's no big giraffe in the room when it comes to that. Yeah. They opened in 2001 post nine eleven, fully aware it by November like I mean, obviously they started construction just, before yeah, that, but it it n- because of nine eleven, America Americans weren't traveling, correct. So that took and away so much of New entertainment, York's tourism uh, everywhere was hit very hard. But especially New York, like nobody's going to be flying New into New York anytime, yeah. you know, uh, around there. Uh, but but even even as as the years went on, I don't think I still don't think they were seeing the crowds that they expected. No, no, um, I. I mean, it was cool, but you know. And again, and again, like like I I think I mentioned before is like there's not a like there's probably going to be a lot of foot traffic through there. Yeah. There's probably not going to be a lot of foot traffic that is buying. Yeah, because you're not charging people to go in. Yeah. Um, Which 
I mean, would they have succeeded at all if no. they charged people no. going? No. Absolutely not. Yeah. But in 2009, Toys R Us acquired FAO Schwartz. Yeah. Um, Which is what we talked about before. Another yes. big toy chain, big big store in New York. Multiple stores in New York, I believe. Um, and I, I think, I, I don't know if they thought this was going to be their turning point or what, but I think they just, I, F- FAO Schwartz was suffering, Toys R Us was suffering. And then in 2015, they made the decision to close the Fifth Avenue FAO Schwartz store, which is the one you were talking about. Yeah, That's like the big one. And then not long after, they're like, yeah, um, we're also closing the Times Square Toys R Us. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's to, to think about it like this, it's kind of like, um, what's a, it's like, uh, like one company that's failing buying their competitor when their competitor yeah. is also, also failing. failing. So it's like, uh, like family video getting bought out by Blockbuster. Yeah. And, and like, like, I don't know, I don't know much about business, <laughs> but like, it just seemed like, honestly, from from when Walmart started beating them, I think that was the start of the end. I really yeah, do. Yeah. Um, and obviously now, like, it, you know, Walmart beating them is 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 what it is. But then, but another now Amazon, Amazon, yeah, coming to beat Walmart. Um, yeah, it's just kind of insane. Uh, do you want to talk about kind of? Yeah, we're going to talk about the end. The end. So it officially closed on December thirtieth of twenty fifteen. I wish I had known. <laughs> you would have gone. I, I was a senior in high school. I, I probably I, would have been like, oh, I'm too cool. <laughs> I, I was in there. You were seeing in twenty fifteen. Okay, I was yeah. definitely there in like twenty thirteen. I'd have to go back. It's whenever I first got on Instagram. One of my first posts was in Times <laughs> Square. I think I showed that to you the yeah. other night. Um, but uh, we had they, it closed in twenty fifteen. It is now replaced because it is such a big space. They aren't just going to replace yes. it with one thing because that wouldn't make sense because it costs so much yes. money to rent all this stuff. So they divide it into different buildings now or different stores, stores, which is now a whole, an Old Navy, a Gap, and a McDonald's. And I don't think all of the space is filled up. Yeah, I think there's probably some like on I the think back still end of space it, there's probably over. other space and yeah. stuff like that. So. Um, w- imagine if they kept the Ferris wheel though, and you just, in order to get from McDonald's to Gap on the other side, you have to like take a Ferris wheel up and over and then you get off on that. So that would be crazy. Uh, different type of, uh, transportation, uh, ride like that would be cool. But, um, and Toys R Us had, Toys R Us had a pop-up store for the holiday season. Uh, this is, this happened in multiple different locations. Yeah. I, I think it was 2019. Yeah. Um, I think they also did them before, though. I think they, like, in 2015, after it closed, I think it, they were gone from Times Square for 18 months, and then they had a pop-up store in Times Square. Yeah. And, like, like a big thing that I think would, they could stay afloat if they do these pop-up type stuff. Because, you know, yeah. you see a lot of different pop-up things where, like, this is kind of leading, it bef- you know, bef- before we kind of wrap everything up, like... Th- I guess, you know, the main question we were looking to ask at the end of this was, like, could Toys R Us possibly make a comeback? Mm -hmm. Full-blown, no. No. Yeah. We were both in agreement. With the rise of Amazon, it's just not possible. Yeah. Because why would I go to Toys R Us, which is a big, it's a mega corporation, when I could give another mega corporation my money? And not have to leave the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a big thing, especially with like, you know, like you're not you're not gonna. The last few times I went to Toys R Us, I'll tell you the the last three times I went there. I think I was there with you the last time. So I went once to get a toy for my niece and nephew for one for each of them for Christmas. They have to year. share. No, they don't have to share. <laughs> Ended up getting like a Ray, Star Wars Ray doll for her. That and is when I was with you. For him, I got him like some Star Wars or Fortnite yeah. or whatever, some action figure. Not Fortnite at the time, uh, but no, he was just begging to play Fortnite <laughs> at that point. <laughs> and uh, but I think that's when I was with you. I think so. But I had been there more after that mm-hmm. to kind of go in and do a sweep of the wrestling action figures yeah. they might have left because they were like, we're closing the store. Yeah. All of a sudden, we, I went there and there was like nothing, nothing. good there. Yeah. It was just like, you know. Old. There was nothing there before they closed I know, the store. I know. Which I think like was a big struggle, especially because most people 
only go to Toys R Us yeah. during holiday season. Yes. They have a lot of seasonal yes. people. and um, That's they, also why the pop-up store model could have been very beneficial for them, though. And being somebody who's worked in retail, like a big store, anything like that, uh, when somebody comes up to you and asks you, oh, you don't have this on the shelf, could you check in the back? The back yeah. never exists unless you're at Ikea. Like, there's, like, yeah. I don't think I don't think it even exists at Ikea because the ba- they show you in the back. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Which, but you can't ask that in that scenario. I think some but, shoe stores also have a back. Yeah, shoe stores, I think. But but that, you yeah. know. But, but if you're than, at, like, a regular store. If you're at a the, Walmart. The back is just where the employees sit. They might have some vending machines. And that's I it. mean, I guess at a, wa- at a Walmart, like, electronic sections of stores, there might be a back for for that because they can't keep all the stuff yeah. out. But still, like, you know. The answer is most likely no. Um, whatever you see on the shelves is if on you, the shelves. If you ask somebody to go check the back, they are just they just go back there and talk to a coworker for a couple minutes and come I, back out. So I, uh, uh, big reveal on the podcast, I used to work at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, which I, I've mentioned to a few other people before uh, through video stuff with this. But, um I used to work at Home Depot and I would get questions all the time like, oh, you know, do you have this? Like, yeah. uh, I'm like, oh, no, it looks like we're out of stock after I scan them with my little phone scanner thing. And they're like, oh, well, if, would you be able to check the back? And I'm like, uh, well, we actually don't have a back here. And I like found – sounded like a jerk, but like – it's like we actually have an up. Like if you look up, yeah. there's an overstock up above, and they I've seen they had that at Toys R Us. Relating yeah. it back to Toys R Us, they kind of have stuff like that where it's like you know rather than having to go back to the back to load a car yeah. cart up towards the front and load stuff onto the shelf, you're just looking up and seeing okay, well that's supposed to be down here, so you just move it. So it's basically a lot more of a you know organized scenario like that. But I would sometimes. If I didn't like the person enough, I'm like, yeah, let me go, let me go check. And I just go talk to like a friend Jim. and then I come, yeah, I go talk to Jim <laughs> and then come back. <laughs> so like it, it's, it's, it's something that like relating back to Toys R Us last, uh, last, very last time I went there, they were pretty cleaned out. The time yeah. before that they were pretty cleaned out. And then the only other time I went in October of, uh, 2014, uh, because I was a, I was, I was looking for a kids wrestling belt yeah. because I was being Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens for yeah. Halloween, uh, which is so weird now that I was being Kevin Owens for Halloween when I just saw him at the Magic yeah. Kingdom like a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I was being Kevin Owens for Halloween and I needed to get an intercontinental championship yeah. belt and I wasn't going to- Did you gonna, get one? Uh, I did. You found one at Toys R Us? I, yes, I okay. found one at Toys R Us They because they, it was the, the, the white one and that's, yeah. you know, he was an intercontinental champion at the time, made perfect sense. I had duct tape on a shirt and that was my costume. Uh, and then my niece had to be a jerk and be born on Halloween. So now I am, uh, yeah, I was, I was really, I was really confused for a second. I was like, Esther wasn't born yet. What does this have to do with Esther? That makes sense. No, so, uh, I <laughs> she was being born, <laughs> went, uh, spent a decent amount of money on this kid's toy belt. And then I wasn't able to use it at my college it. party. You should have gifted it to Esther. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I really should have. I really should have. Um, taking photos of her with it uh but that was i mean that's i mean other than that i i hadn't stepped foot in a toys r us since i was a kid yeah or the the times square one yeah uh but a a big thing with the times square location uh if you do see videos online if you look up the closing of times square there is a uh, semi-viral video of one of the store managers giving a speech. Yeah, it made me emotional. <laughs> it made, did the one you see have like audio under it that was like, uh, like whatever, like a, a Saving Private Ryan type no, audio? No, no, it, 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 it was just it was just, just the guy yeah. talking. Okay, yeah. So I have the transcript of this speech under here. So he's basically giving a closing speech to the. Do you want me to give the speech? You can. I okay. think it would probably be best. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll tear up at the end. Don't worry. Okay, I know. I know this probably means more to you than it does to me, just since you have actual childhood memories of this. When I just have, <laughs> you know, angsty high school memories of, you know. The Ferris wheel. So if you wanted to kind of talk okay. through this, that'd be, that'd be so, great. So um, I don't have it written down who he was, but... It's okay. Nameless uh, he's, store manager of... Which it seems like he had he been He was there like the an important time. person. He, was like, yeah. he wasn't just a store manager. He was something more important. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me... <clears throat> 14 years. That's how long we've been here. That's how long the store has been an amazing place for millions of people from all over the world and all over the country and all over the city. 
Who else do you know in your life that either lost their job or their job was finished and the whole freaking world knew about it? Not too many people. I have a list of things I won't forget. Number one, do you know where the bathroom is? Number two, is this candy free? And then the video cuts out and then cuts, cuts back in. Number six, well, can't you check the back room? Number eight, how do I get out of here? Those are the things I will not miss. I got a list of things I will miss. It's just one word, you. He points to all the his employees. His employees. Oh. And also when he's when he has his list of things he won't forget, it's literally like the list of Jericho's like holds or yeah. whatever. <laughs> it's just like a really long. Like, <laughs> it literally is. So it he's looks got, like he's got he's got this wrestling promo he's doing, and he's got a he's got a prop. With yes, him. he's like a <laughs> carrot top. He's like, oh, and then gonna... <laughs> and then and then he drops the list, and then he takes out his wallet and grabs the list of things he will miss. Yeah. and it's literally just a piece of paper, and it just says you. So clever. It's, I mean, which it's good. It's I, actually I very sweet. How often do you have people in like upper management of like a chain who actually care? You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I do have a list of things that matter the most. And he pulls out his wallet and he takes his paycheck out. I thought that's what he was going to do. I thought he was going to take money out. I was like, oh, God. Money. <laughs> that is why we are closing because we don't have any more of this. <laughs> yeah. I um, Kind of back to the question we were talking about before, not to kind of move on from that amazing speech you just gave, which uh, thank you, little claps, uh, Universal Studios claps for you. Um <laughs> Uh, what could make it possible to come back in any form? It's a very valuable property, a title that, you yeah. know. Yeah, and it, I mean, I think it holds a lot of nostalgia in a lot of people's hearts. Yes. I really do, because I think there's a lot of people our age who, you know, are like starting families. Gross. But uh, <laughs> um, Not gross for other people, gross no, for us, because yeah. it's just not for us. But We already have our furry babies. Yes. Um, but like, I think, you know, they're probably upset that they don't get to take their kids to Toys R Us because, like, that was always the best thing as a kid, yeah. getting to go to Toys R Us and then your parents being like, okay, you can, you can get one thing. Yeah. And then having to decide what that one thing was going to be and then trying to bring them, like, the most expensive item in the store and they're like, like uh, no. no. How about you try it one more time? So how about that skip it over here? That's how it worked. Right? I loved my skip it. Okay, okay. I would just be out there all day on the driveway just, like, skipping because um, it would, like, it would track how many, like, cycles yeah. you had done yeah and i would just try to get as high up as i could that's why you like your uh apple watch so much yes <laughs> <laughs> it's just an adult skit. yes that's all it is <laughs> um i do think the pop-up store thing could <sighs> i think it could work if they took it to a different level as well so like you said it's got More this of an huge experience. nostalgic value yes yeah so uh, you know how there's different pop-up shops? I know that it, it, uh, California's Disney Springs or what a downtown Disney that they have there, they've had pop-up shops that are like these like interactive art experiences. Yeah, you know, yeah, stuff yeah, like, yeah. And not to totally take that side of it, but if they had a touring type experience, they got a Van Gogh one that's going on yeah. right now, stuff like that. Did that but also go around with new state-of-the-art toys and VR mm -hmm. experiences and video games? That not everybody, like you're not going to be able to go into a... GameStop or a Walmart or a Target and be able to use the PlayStation VR or be able to use the Oculus Rift or whatever. Like yeah. it's it's just it, making it a pop-up shop so then they don't have to pay like I mean um, I think they I mean but could they, charge people to go No, in. no, no. I mean they you they don't they don't have to pay as much in like building fees. Oh, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh you know, making it a limited time thing in limited locations yeah. might bring a little bit more interest yeah no because i i do i do remember like when they announced like specifically in 2019 everyone was like panicking when like, they were coming back no like that they were everyone was like so worried yeah about and then they made an announcement and everyone's like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> yeah no it's 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 a big deal that it closed but it's also there's some use out of it like i don't like as a company selling toys i think that if they they would need to set up a very great online system. Yeah. And they would need to have exclusive rights to certain toys and certain things like that. Yeah. Which is not going to happen at this point. No. Um, unless they have I mean, a Walmart, team that invents new toys and new games and new whatever. So Walmart, like, well, online Walmart has been trying to, like, 
become Amazon or like be Amazon's competitor for like years now. Yeah, but again, if you've ever close. used uh, Walmart's online system, you will know that it can never be a competitor with no. with Amazon. No, I don't trust anything that they have on there. Yeah, especially especially their in stock. <laughs> it's items always sketchy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you you like you click on it like oh okay I could order now you order now and it's like expected shipping like 180 days <laughs> plus. And it's like, yeah, no, like it's not, it's, it, their system isn't set up like that. And it's very hard to get yeah. something set up like that. So I don't think that uh, Toys R Us is going to be able to come back in any capacity no. like that. Um, is there any other stores similar to this that are still going even? Do you know? See, that was, that's what I was trying to think about. So the the big one was FAO Schwartz. I had never been there. Yeah. But that was a big toy brand. The only other thing I was thinking of was like Learning Express. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's where I used to go get all my webkins. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Which there's still there's still one in our hometown. Is there? I, it's I still don't open. Know. It, but I also know that they they don't just do just toys. They also do like learning and school supplies school for stuff. teachers. Yeah, and, you know, other stuff like that. So, so, it, so it might still be there. But yeah, I don't know. Um, the one thing I did want to note is that um, on the third floor of the Times Square. Toys R Us. They had like displays on the ceiling, so they had like Superman like holding up a a truck. Oh, okay. And they had like a Spider Man swinging from the ceiling. Yeah. Um, the Spider Man was was saved and was recently up for auction, or not recently, but it was sold at an auction for nine thousand six hundred dollars. Because of where it came from, or because yes. it was okay. I was gonna say that doesn't sound like it'd be worth that much. No, no, like they like it was Spider-Man a collector's item. On, no, know. no, no, it was it was a collector's item. That's and, cool. Uh, they could they could have sold the T Rex. I know. I, I mean, will know. Again, it's five yeah, tons. <laughs> maybe the skin from it and a mannequin inside that you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's that's Toys R Us. We're we're wrapping up. I don't think there's anything else we have to talk about with this. No, um, it's just just sad. I truly do not understand why it was such a shock to me that it was closed. <laughs> Every other toy store, Toys yeah, R Us, has other, been closed. You told me yesterday, you're like, oh yeah, I saw it and it was closed. And I was like, yeah, it's closed. I like, was like, did you know it closed in 2015? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, yes. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why have you not updated me on this? I update her on everything theme park wise. Why is this one childhood memory not updated? <laughs> like. Um, but yeah, no, that, that is Toys R Us. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, kind of the subject today. If you have any um, suggestions for future topics, we're mainly sticking with theme park stuff. Um, I believe next week we're going somewhere in Universal, um, possibly... E.T.? Possibly E.T. I think we're going Animal actors. E. <laughs> One or the other. Uh, I still I don't think we can do a whole show on Animal actors. I don't think so. <laughs> There's not enough meat on that. Uh, no, I'm not going to say meat on that bone. That cool. is not uh, <laughs> uh, appropriate for that. But uh, after that, yeah, we're doing one more week. And then after that, I believe we are headed to uh, Coaster Land, right? Uh, June is going to be our... I would call it Coaster Month, not Coaster <laughs> Land. We're headed into Coaster Month. Uh, we're doing a Coaster Month in June, uh, June of 2021, depending on when you're listening to this. Uh, we're covering a bunch of different roller coasters. Uh, so get ready to strap in for that. That's going to be a bumpy ride. We're going to have a guest or two here and there for that as well, which we haven't done yet. Uh, but yes, uh, we're going to uh, wrap up now. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, not Twitter. I don't use Twitter. F- subscribe to us on YouTube. We're growing, doing videos all the time on there. Doing TikTok. L- TikTok especially. It's, go follow us on TikTok. We're actually getting attention over there. Because uh, it we're is posting take, good content. I mean, we're posting good t- content <laughs> everywhere, but uh, TikTok uh, is liking our stuff, and we're uh, still putting that out there and growing there. Some of them have done pretty well. Isabel is wrapping up a series that she's doing voiceovers for. Yeah, I did nothing but the voiceover. You make it sound like I did it. I did nothing <laughs> except speak. It is. Uh, I didn't even write the words. <laughs> it's Dis- your, they're your words. Disney's Most Wanted, which is uh, a pretty fun series about people who've been banned from Disney and and reasons why uh, we the last one we put out as of time of recording was one on Barack Obama and how yeah. he was banned from Disneyland uh, back in the 80s uh, for breaking some rules. So go follow us on TikTok. Uh, yeah, rate, review, subscribe, stuff like that on podcast networks. Tell your friends about us. That's pretty much everything we have to talk about. Uh, we will see you guys next week for E.T.'s Adventure. 
Uh, other than that, uh, we'll see you guys real soon. A warm welcome back to those of you who made it. And a friendly word of warning, something you won't find in any guidebook. In order to keep up with new episodes of For the Love of Theme Parks podcast, please subscribe. You can help support us by visiting patreon.com slash for the love of theme parks or by following us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at for the love of theme parks. We'll see you soon. Ha 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 ha!